today we're making arancini with marinara sauce and everything is made from scratch. This video has been sponsored by Chickity, who is one of my best friends. She wanted me to make a recipe inspired by her. So this recipe is inspired by her because, like her, risotto needs a lot of work. Not that she's needy, but she always tries to be the best version of herself and that's a lot of work to put on yourself. So. I say that risotto and arancini are definitely a meal inspired by chickadee and it's mushroom arancini. So perfect because she loves mushrooms. Let's go. So this is what it looked like. Look at this. It was crispy, but the middle was soft and cheesy with the cheese in the middle and the marinara was perfectly sweet and tomatoey because it's tomato so yes first thing you'll want to do is you will want to prep all of the veggies that you want to put in your mushroom stock it's basically a vegetable stock but that you put a lot of mushroom in it so first thing you'll want to do is you want to grill the carrot onion and you want to add some seasoning so as usual salt pepper and a little bit of thyme in here mixed everything well i had a few jalapeno left in my fridge so i've put them in because chickadee loves spicy as well as mushroom so it was perfect in this and since i was making this for a um, potluck party and that she would eat some as well i figured why not make it spicy so she can enjoy it even more i added some garlic because we need garlic who doesn't like garlic not welcome here. Garlic, potatoes, tomato, I'm sorry Alice, but those are the three best food that you can find. So you want to cook the mushroom. You don't want to boil them. You don't want to sweat the vegetable. You really want to grill them. So that's why I'm going like step by step. And I wanted this to be a deep mushroom flavored that was not diluted. And that worst thing, I could add some vegetable stock to it if it was too concentrated, because it's better to have something that tastes too much than something that doesn't taste enough. So once you're satisfied with the grilling of the veggies, you want to add a full can of tomato paste. And I use small tomato paste can. It's like maybe 100 millimeter, 50 millimeter, something like that. It's a really, really small amount. So don't put a whole like 500 millimeter can in there. That's going to be too much. <laughs> it's like two, three tablespoon ish. And you want to keep adding the mushroom and grill them. Obviously, I should have used a bigger pot, but that's what I had available. And I didn't think it would make that much because mushroom shrinks. And I was like, I'm going to have plenty of space in this, but I've used mushroom that has less water, so it didn't shrink that much. Once you're ready to add the water, you want to add some dehydrated mushroom. And for the mushroom, take whichever are available. And if you want more variety of flavor, you can add variety of mushroom, but I've seen a lot of people just do it with the regular white button mushroom and it's perfectly fine. Most of those mushrooms I found uh, on a sale and they were really cheap, so I figured why not use them? You want to add enough water to cover everything. I added two full liter of water, so eight cup of water for all of these mushrooms. I don't know how much mushroom I had, but I had a lot. So I just added enough water to cover everything and I bring it to a boil. Once it was boiling, I reduced the temperature so that it simmer. It may have taken a little while before I lowered the temperature because I got distracted. And it's when you want to strain it, I lost that footage, so just strain it in something that strains. <laughs> <laughs> Remove the mushroom, discard them, and keep the broth. You can freeze it or keep it in the fridge. For the risotto, first thing you'll want to do is you want to have an equal mixture of that mushroom broth. If it's really concentrated as mine, do half enough. If it's not that concentrated, then you can do uh, maybe three quarter mushroom and a quarter vegetable broth. And you want to have a total of five cup of broth for two cups of arborio rice, chorizo de rice. Don't use any other kind of rice, it won't work. Then the first thing you'll want to do is you want to cook the mushroom. You don't want to put mushrooms in the risotto that are uncooked. So you want to cook the mushroom. I've used some bacon fat because I had some and it's a lot of flavor. It's smoky and it's really tasty and it's a way to not waste resources. So cook the mushroom until they are crispy or golden or golden and crispy. Cook them to your liking. And then 
put them on the side for later use and cook all of the mushroom before. So I'm going to cook some of the mushroom here and I'm going to cook another batch of mushroom after. I season them with salt, pepper, garlic powder and put them on the side once they are fully cooked. I did two ways of cutting the mushrooms, small cubes and slices, just to have some variety in texture as well. Once the mushrooms are cooked, you want to add some more bacon fat because you want to have enough liquid that the rice will be able to be coated with it. And cut the shallot and garlic. So a little bit of peanut oil just to make sure I have plenty of oil at the bottom of my pan for when I add the rice. I want to cook them for a minute or two. Here I added the cubed mushroom, added some chives, salt and pepper as usual. Once the shallot, garlic and mushrooms are cooked, you want to make sure that you have enough fat at the bottom to coat. You don't need that much, you need like two tablespoons of fat for the rice. You want to add a whole two cup of a burrito rice at the bottom of a cup. And no, you cannot cook risotto in a rice cooker, please. Please don't do that. Do it on a stove like this, please. <laughs> <laughs> you want to cook the rice for a minute maybe or until it is translucent you will see it will change color once it will have absorbed some of the fat at the bottom and then you want to add half a cup of white wine of your choice it can be the cheap one from the grocery store but if you will taste a little bit more the wine if you know you can taste it a little bit more then i suggest to take one you like i don't notice I guess I'm not evolved enough yet. <laughs> then you want to add one cup or half a cup of the mushroom broth into the risotto at a time. And you want to mix the risotto each time that you add some broth and mix it thoroughly until everything is absorbed and you keep going until the rice is soft. You want to make sure to wait until the liquid is absorbed in between each of the time that you add some broth because otherwise you'll just cool down the rice too much and you will have too much liquid and it will be harder to absorb and it will just be a soggy soup with rice. It's not what you want. So be patient. It takes a while and you want to add salt and pepper the mix every now and then. Just do a taste test and see if it's salty and peppery enough because the broth, if you made it yourself, will not be salted. So you need to add some salt into the risotto. And like that, you can control the amount of salt that is in your meal as well. And if you're not precise with the measurement, you will have issues. So here I had all of it over two cup of rice. And I had to add like a cup more of liquid than normally I would. So two cup of a burial rice for half a cup of white wine and five cups of liquid of your choice. That's the rule for risotto. Then you can do every flavor you want. Once the risotto is cooked and the rice is tender, you can add the mushroom. You can add two cups of parmesan. I want this to be cheesy. I added more chives. I added some MSG to boost the flavor. I added lime juice. It sounds weird, but I added two tablespoons of lime juice. I added one tablespoon of maple syrup and a pinch of steak seasoning. It's weird, but it's salty and it's full of flavor and steak seasoning is really good on mushroom. And this is what the risotto looked like at the end. It's creamy, it's yummy, full of flavor and mushrooms and everything. Or the arancini. This is the... <laughs> This is the messy part. This is the part I hated the most. So what you want to do is you want to work smart. You don't want to work hard. So you don't want to do a bowl. So you don't want to do a bowl of risotto and dip it in everything and then put it aside and have your hands full of everything and that it's a huge mess. Count the number of balls that you want to do and cut the cheese accordingly. I've cut the whole brick of mozzarella and once I made the ball, I put the mozzarella in, but I had my hands full of risotto. So at the end, I had a bowl full of cheese covered in risotto. And I was like, what the fuck do I do with that? So I had to make mozzarella stick, which is the same process as the arancini, but with the mozzarella. So I saved it, but I was still annoyed by that. <laughs> End of the story. Let's make the arancini. So as you can see here, I have a few balls that I've made already. I'm just gonna skip ahead and 
go to the process. I put some, this is messy. I put some flour on to the risotto ball that was already filled with cheese because it was easier to handle after because they were less sticky. So you can do that, but you don't have to. I did the cheese stick before doing the risotto arancini ball, so my counter is a mess. Sorry. Not sorry, but whatever. It is what it is. So when I take a risotto ball, put it in the flour, put it in the egg, put it in the breadcrumb, and you want to keep going. Flour, egg, breadcrumb, until everything is fully covered. And what I did is I put all the ball of arancini into the breadcrumb, and I shook the ball until everything was fully covered, and I used a slotted spoon to remove them and put it on a cooking sheet that I would put in the freezer later. So I stacked them all up in there. Yes, there were some flat bottoms. It doesn't matter. It still tastes the same. I've put that in the freezer for a few days because I was making them for that weekend and didn't want to do all of this on one day. So I've put them into the freezer until it was time to cook. On the day of serving, I did a marinara sauce. I have to include that because they were so good with it. I cannot remove this part of the video. So it was a six hour long video that I reduced in whatever how long it's gonna be. And it was a lot of work. <laughs> I took some fresh basil from my garden and I chopped it up as good as I could. And I added that to an onion that I was quartered and some peeled garlic. And I started cooking that into a saucepan at high temperature, added the oregano, some chili flakes, salt and pepper, and I added a whole can of whole tomato peeled into this. Mixed everything well, and I let it simmer for 45 minutes, mixing occasionally, until it was ready. Once the marinara is ready, you want to remove the onions from the sauce, use a merchant blender to blend everything smoothly, and you want to rectify the seasoning. So here I added some parmesan because we like parmesan. I added some maple syrup and some more salt and pepper. And it's ready. Now it was time to cook the arancini. I cooked them into my air fryer, but normally it is done in an actual fryer. You want to put three or four in your air fryer, depending on how big it is. And you want to put that to the maximum temperature. You want to drizzle some oil on it. And you want to put them into the air fryer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you want to flip them and you want to cook them for another 10 minutes. And then you want to take it out. I'm going to do a test with a knife. Make sure that the middle is hot. If it's hot, it's ready. If it's not, then that one, um, I'm sorry, it may not be arancini anymore. It's going to be risotto with breadcrumbs. But you know, to cook the remaining one a little bit longer. But they are going to be golden. Like, they're going to be a lot more golden once they are cooked than when you put them in the first time. And you serve them on top of the marinara and it is going to be amazing. Then you want to garnish that with whatever herbs you have to hide the imperfections. And look at this beauty. So pretty, so tasty. It was delicious. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe today. Uh, I know I did. I know my friends did. And thank you, Chickadee, for sponsoring this video again. Um, make sure that you don't talk bad against Pillar in the comments because Chickadee may turn into a barbarian and rage against Pillar. We love the indie here. Chickadee loves the indie. And I had to make that reference about Pillar because she loves Pillar. So. If you like this video, if you like D&D, if you like food, if you like me, please subscribe, comment, <laughs> uh, follow me everywhere. Yes, I keep hitting the mic all the time. I did that last video too. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. So just follow me everywhere. I appreciate you all. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next week for another video. And we'll have pumpkin and apple recipe soon. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.